Hello my fellow creative spirits. So today's tutorial is going to be on how to make an eye. So I'm just going to jump right in and say the first thing that you're going to need is a surface. Here I am using uh, just a small canvas uh, that I got from Michaels. Also you're going to need some paintbrushes. Um, my favorite paintbrush to use for these smaller paintings are the detail liner brush. I get all of my details with that. But you want to have different sizes just to make things easier. You're also going to need a writing tool to do the underdrawing before you go into painting. It's good to map it out. You're also going to need to use these two colors. If you're doing my method, I use burnt umber and also white. So those two are the only two that I'm going to use because I'm going to put in the colors later and I want to do all the values first. You're also going to need two different jars. So in this jar, I have just the Gamzol, which is the paint thinner. And in the other one, you're going to want Galkid and Gamzol, and I use a 50-50 mix, and that's going to be my medium. And then also another medium that I'm going to be using is linseed oil. And I just use this brand right here. And finally, you're going to need a uh, palette that's going to hold all of your different colors. As you can see, um, mine is really messy, and I have to clean it off. But yeah, let's get right into the tutorial. So the very first thing that you're going to need to do is you're going to need to map out your underdrawing just to make sure that the proportions are right. Um, so I know some people can use tracing. You can use various different methods. Just recently I finally got off my training wheels of tracing and I'm finally able to freehand things. Um, so basically what I'm doing as I'm freehanding, I am looking at the shapes within the shapes. It's kind of hard to describe. It's something that definitely comes with practice uh, to be able to eyeball and see what are the shapes relative to each other and figuring out exactly where the pupils go. So you just kind of correct it as you go and you, you, you it's, it's a very slow process. Here this is actually four times the speed of what I'm actually doing it as. Um, I'm just always looking at my reference picture as I'm drawing. And uh, one of the tips, one of my biggest tips that I can give you is to use a very good reference picture. Uh, don't est underestimate the power of the reference picture. Uh, I took a picture in very high resolution and I took probably five or six different pictures before I finally got the one that I really liked that wasn't blurry at all and I could see all of the details of the eye including the rivers of blood vessels and the eyes and also um, the reflections and even just the skin, the pores, you can see every individual pore and that will make a huge difference. Before I used to kind of estimate how to do the reference or if I would just settle with a blurry reference picture and you definitely don't want to do that if you want the highest resolution for your painting and if you're going for realism like I am um, you're also going to want a good reference picture for that. So yeah, so I'm just correcting as I go. You can kind of see now I'm getting into the actual painting so my method for going into painting is I kind of just jump in and I use the dark burnt umber by itself for the darkest areas and I use kind of like a medium tone and I'm just kind of going in and I am always correcting in this part too especially with the values sometimes you might um, think that a part is lighter than it is for example the whites in the eyes are not white they're actually um, not anywhere near white. It's actually a very medium tone. Uh, so you just want to look and see where are the lightest whites and get the paint only the whitest whites in the whitest white areas. And the same thing with the darkest areas. There's going to be very few areas that are actually completely black or completely very dark. So just be aware of that and that a lot of everything is going to be in the medium tones so here I'm using my liner brush to begin working in the details. So where I, um, the eye has a lot of different t uh, patterns and textures within it. So you just want to make sure that you're working on that. And also take note that this is taking me a very long time. As I said before, this is sped up drastically. Uh, this is a very slow process. And the longer you take on a piece, the better the outcome will be. So another tip is to check the perspective. So here I'm working at an angle and even on an easel it can be at an angle that can skew the perspective of what you're looking at it. So when you're looking at it, it might look good when it's at the side, but when you pick it up, it might be at an angle. So just every once in a while pick it up and kind of look at it and check to make sure that you're not skewing it 
or the perspective or anything like that. And also try different angles that are comfortable when you're painting, uh, painting it from the side if the eyelashes are easier to paint from the side and so on. So here I'm doing the eyelashes. Um, I wanted to kind of take mention of the technique that I'm using here. It's a wet on wet technique. And basically what you're doing when you're doing the wet on wet technique, you want to make sure that your paint is wet when you're working over top of it to get like those lines and the textures because as soon as it's dry it's going to be uh, s like a scumbling effect which is like it's not going to be a smooth line it's going to be very uh, very clear that you didn't use uh, wet materials when you were working with it so just make sure that um, when you're doing this you're just working all in, in one go and I actually have a way to go back and kind of re-wet the surface if say you decide you you're gonna call it a night which I did multiple times you call it a night and you decide you want to come back to it the next day and all of the paint is already dry so that technique is where I take the uh, linseed oil and I actually did another video on this it's the owl piece that I did and how to use the um, oiling up technique so basically what you do is you put after it's completely dry you put a very thin layer of linseed oil on top of your painting and then you're going to paint over top of that and the th layer of linseed oil is going to be extremely thin but it's going to re-wet the surface but it's not going to mix up the paint under it so you still have the paint undisturbed under it but now you have a glide that will allow paints to build up on top of it very softly and very easily and you can do those little lines without having to worry about it looking um, rough and not smooth and also you just can keep layering on top of it so as you see here I'm just continuing to come in and fix things and adjust things and put the hairs where I want them to go and looking at the tiny little reflections and every little individual detail I'm kind of zooming in and focusing in on it and seeing how I can get it to look more and more like the picture and I'm not settling until I see that it is almost like my reference but I just keep looking at it and say okay right here I need to make it a little lighter right here I need to make it a little darker here I need to add another I um I need to add another eyelash here um and just never taking my eyes off the reference picture I'm just constantly looking at it and looking where the lightest area is so as you can tell the whitest areas in this painting is the reflection on the eye there's like a in the inner corner you also see a little bit of a reflection um, on the bottom eyelash and also along the top of the uh, the top of the eyes you're gonna see also that white reflection and then the darkest areas are some parts of the eyelashes though not all of them a lot of the eyelashes are actually a medium brown tone and there's very few that are actually completely dark and also um, the creases in the eye so here I'm just continuing to go in and adjust things, add in pores, add in textures, fixing things up, adding uh, little beauty marks here and there, um, and just working on all of those details. So I also wanted to mention that this technique you don't have to use just for the eye. This is something that you can easily incorporate to doing anything else. You're really just looking at the way light reflects off of things and the shape of things. It's Practicing the eyes will help you get better at practicing and making anything. Once you get the basic shapes down and understand how to do shapes and do value, then you'll be able to incorporate that and do hands and you'll be able to do landscapes and you'll be able to do a lot of things once you understand how it works. Um, and this is something, again, that takes a lot of practice. Like I can tell you as much tutorials as I can about doing a specific area or a specific thing but the only thing that you'll that will make you a better artist and make you better at doing this is just going in and practicing and practicing and practicing and practicing and it's years of continuous and consistent practicing is what will get you the results um, I just look at my work from a year ago and it's just insane how much more I can get is to, in terms of value and in terms of detail so I just want you to keep in mind that it's it's going to take a lot of practice and a lot of time before um, before you really start to see any difference in your art. And this is just my advice for something that I know at the moment, but I know 
I only know the tip of the iceberg of what there is to know about painting. And this is a technique uh, using glazing and the glazing method is just a technique that I recently learned and that I've recently been practicing and I've fallen in love with. But I don't know what, I'm, what technique I'll be using months from now. This is just something for you to keep in mind if you want to try doing this. And I feel like it's a lot easier than going in straight away with the color because you can focus on the values and that takes away the stress of doing color. And then you can always add in color later, which will be the next part of this tutorial. It's going to be how I add in color over top of this. And that, that is one of my favorite techniques, as I said before, because you don't have to worry about getting the values right right um or getting the colors right instead you can focus on value and then move into color so here as you can see i'm just adding my fun little details i'm just i i can't do just an eye i just love to add uh, the surreal qualities to it so here i'm doing kind of like an upside down soil it's probably kind of hard to see but it's like soil that's upside down and there's roots growing in it and it's kind of just like growing down and again, I'm using the same technique as I did before, the wet on wet technique, making sure, um, looking at what parts are the lightest and putting in those, putting in the darkest parts and then filling it in with everything in between and just adjusting things as I go and just framing and looking at the composition and how I want to have the composition, which I wanted it to kind of really frame the eye. So I had a lot of people tell me that they wanted to get a real-time video, which this isn't necessarily a real-time video, it is a little bit more sped up than what a real-time video would be, but if this was a real-time video this would be about roughly, I want to say, six or seven hours of footage, and I could be wrong, but it was a lot of time that I spent on this and I'm pretty sure not a lot of people would want to sit through six or seven hours, and I still feel like at this speed you can see what I'm doing just in a sped up fashion so you can see still where I'm where I'm adding in the colors and how I'm using the paintbrush and what sizes and all of that without you having to sit through uh, <laughs> me drinking coffee every couple of seconds or you know those little mini breaks that I take so here at the bottom I am putting in waves and putting in water I wanted to do kind of like soil and water um, and do like some fun composition for this uh, which would give it some color when I was to go in with the glazing technique uh, to just give it more interest even though I love the way um, this burnt sienna and white looks just by itself I just feel like the simplicity of it is very beautiful in itself and it looks very like classical and and this is actually a technique that I found out through um, one of my favorite artists Annie Steg, she posted um, about how she does her her underpaintings and her glazing technique and I just thought it was so interesting so um, definitely never feel bad about reaching out to artists and asking them like a small question a very specific question usually they are more than happy to answer and just as with me like if you guys have any questions about how I did anything sometimes it's hard to get all of the information that I want to out it's kind of hard to communicate everything and I'll forget something and I'll remember it later so if you guys have any questions feel free to ask me in the comments and I will answer to the best of my ability and as soon as possible so here I'm just continuing to look at the highlights of where the water is um, I'm not that great at painting water quite yet it's something that I still need a little practice on and I'm still impatient with sometimes because of doing each individual droplet so definitely um, I feel like when you practice a lot and you start painting things and you start experimenting and oh I want to paint water droplets or I want to paint this I feel that um, doing that will help you build a mental database of these textures so everything that I use in this painting is off of a reference but I have done paintings and pieces that I don't even look at the reference or I go so loosely from the reference and create my own textures because I've built up that mental database of what the patterns on trees look like or the patterns on water or what eyes look like. Um, but when I do invent my own, um, when I do invent my own textures and my own uh, like trees and stuff like that it still won't be to the amount of detail as looking at a real reference but sometimes it just depends on my intention for the painting like if I want to stick to it being very realistic or I want it to kind of flow more naturally from my own mental database 
So it's just really experimentation and sometimes I can't find a reference exactly how I want it to. That's my biggest struggle, so I have to kind of use approximations. So that concludes the end of this tutorial. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and that it was helpful. I really wanted to do a tutorial because people always ask me like what's my technique and this is the technique that I've been using as of late for the last couple of paintings that I've been doing and I am addicted to it because it's just it's such a fun technique and just going in and doing glazing later it takes a little more patience but I feel that the depth is um, beyond what just going in a la prima is well a la prima is where you put in all the colors and values at the same time which I still have trouble and difficulty with um, so I hope that you guys try it out. Be sure that if you did like this tutorial, let me know in the comments. If you guys have any tips of your own or if you have any suggestions, please also leave that in the comments. And I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video and I will catch you guys next time for part two of the glazing tutorial. Alrighty, thank you guys. Bye!